I've just had a terrible, a funny turn. Oh, I've never known anything like this. I haven't felt less like this for the oh, best part of 30 years. Someone's just sent me. I don't know how to say this. I can't get the words out. New tackle. New tackle. That's right, they've sent me some new tackle. Some people called Madfish. Well, Madfish, that's got to fit with the Totally Awesome crew, right? definitely. They sent me to try a Madfish Rockstar. Well, that's got to be moi. Rockstar LRF. Seven and a half foot. 3.0, no, I don't know if that's metres or whatever it is, dash 12 grams. So I guess it throws 3 to 12 grams. It's LRF. I don't want any of that LRF stuff. I don't want to be going down the coast 60 miles to catch little wee blennies and gobies and dragonets. No, that's not for the totally awesome crew. I'm going to test it for them, all right, on carp, close range. Wait for this, what else they sent me? All for test. Oh, I do like the boxing. This is a mad fish centipin reel. Now, for the guys who don't know, lovely pouch it comes with as well. Centipin reels would generally be associated with float fishing on a river, and it enables you to run the float through the river, through the you know, down with the current, down with the stream, at a constant speed without it bumping and flicking off the front of a fixed spool or spinning reel. They spin like absolute crazy, and this one, I just take the what I call the drag tensioner there, there's a nut there we'll show you later on. I've already spooled it up with some ancient second-hand nylon that I had left over just to test it. It spins as long as I'm talking and telling you about this. And not only this, well it would spin if it didn't catch on my uh, finger. They sent me one of these latest rage, all the rage these are, they are called a Madfish Carbon Air landing net. Now they're really really strong the heads of these. Apparently a lot of the matchmen are going for them so I'm going to give it a try. Listen, I've got landing nets. Don't know where I left them though but they're around on the bank somewhere. It's about quite a few of you guys out they've already found my old nets. I'm going to give this one a go. I'm going to give the reel a go. I'm absolutely point blank fishing right in close there. I'm hoping to get a bit of footage for you of carp coming in close and I'm hoping to get you the actual take of a carp Wait till you see this. I've got all this lovely new gear. Look, I've got, I've, got, I've got lovely new shiny gear. Wait till you see the setup I'm using for my rod rest. You're going to love it. So this, believe it or not, is my rod rest. It's, it's about eight inches tall, put into a wooden block with a V for the rod butt there. It goes on the ground. I'm going to keep it really low. I use it for pen fishing rods. Now, this is coat hanger wire. Down here is my blocks with my buzzers, audible indicators there, and I'm baiting up, literally, just down there, a couple of little swims. Now this is a Madfish net uh, frame they've sent me. I got it coupled to, I think it's a bank stick. <laughs> it's a bank stick, I can't even afford a landing net pole. It looks like an extendable bank stick, I don't know. No, no, maybe it's a landing net pole. It's not too big. Anyhow, the frame's on there, let me tell you all about it. Give me one second. So there it is, very, very, very light. It says here, it's ultra light, rigid, rigid. 6K carbon? It says it's a rigid, ultra light, it says, so it's a match landing net with ultra light, super rigid, 6K carbon frame and an integral spreader. It's finished with a stainless steel thread and a Loctite compression washer. Blah, blah, blah. The fish, it's called a fish safe mesh, is fastened to the rim of the frame, leaving a slippery rim for, oh, that's, a, that's quite clever. Look, if you look at that, normally you would slide, let's say, the frame of the net through all those little hoops to make you land in it. This one doesn't have it. This one actually has a plastic, real slidey bit there, so it's not gonna knock scales off the fish. That's a good idea, and I've never seen that before. I've gotta be honest, that's something, that is something new. And it's very, very strong and rigid. I can see why the matchmen like it. What else do they say about it? It's a bowl-shaped net construction with dual-sized mesh. That's two sizes of mesh in here. That combines fast draining, yes, I can see fast draining, big holes, with an anti-rig snag central mesh panel. So this piece 
in the middle here, that's why, is so your rigs don't get tangled in it. Must be some special ultra fine stuff, and yet the water can drain out here. So there you go, guys. That is pretty well a modern co concept in the landing net. We'll find out if we're going to get anything in it in a minute. Let's have a look at the reel. Right, here we go, peeps. I have to say, I'm not into new stuff. My son, Michael, is very definitely into new stuff. But this comes with a really, really smart box. It's called Wild River. I guess 4.5 inch centre pin. Wild River. Nice name. By Madfish. I do like the box. It's like opening a Rolex. Is it going to be a, a nice watch in here? A gold watch? No. It's nothing. Do you know why? Do you know why, Graham? You stupid child pulling. I'll put it on the rod. There we go. Now, I used to fish with a match aerial many, many years ago down on the Hampshire Raven, catching loads of barbel, float fishing, free lining, trotting, all that business. So I'm well aware what uh, these are used for. I'm just going to try and see what it, I can catch a fish on it today. It's got got to call it the clicker, the ratchet just there, a little knob. I would have liked to send a vertical knob rather than the round one so it's forwards or off. But you know, in and out, it's not even geared, in or out like that, or switch it on, got the ratchet. There you've got an adjustable tension on that nut, which you can you can set it so it's almost absolutely nothing. You can just breathe on it and it will spin. This is on river fishing, or you can tension it up. And we used to tension those nuts up pretty tight and fish like really close for barbel and then you just grab the spool, the edge of the spool with your thumb and lift into the fish, because this would be revolving and turn into a real knuckle wrapper. See what it says about it. Well, here's the specs on it. It says, size, 11 centimeters diameter, two ball bearings, on and off clicker, which I've told you about, a removable line guard. Now, that's the line guard, this piece here. We used to take ours off. Always used to take them off because we could cast and let the line spin off the side of the spool it does put a bit of twist in it, but this way keeps it nice and straight. But a lot of guys don't like the lying guys, they take them off, you know, and they can bat the reel better, what they call batting. And a neoprene fit to rod case. I'm not sure what that means. Well, what it also does say is that this is a great weapon when margin fishing for carp and tench. Now, I'm not going to catch tench in the old, I think. Got a chance of a carp. I'll hold it high enough, I might get a Canada goose. So we give it a go, we're going to set that one up, just with a few maggots on there. Finally, well we better talk about that rod, haven't we? Here's the rod. Right, so this is like a LRF rod. So LRF rods, for those who don't know, have got very, very fine tips. Now when they said, these guys said, Madfish, want, it, you, you want to send you a rod? I said, oh, please don't send me the lightest rock fishing one. They're just a horror story for me. I don't need to catch fish that are three inches long. But they're very, very, very sensitive all the way down. You can use it for light spinning, light jigging, stuff like that. And it comes with a screw winch fitting that's integral to the handle here. Nice, light, but loads of rods have got this sort of fittings nowadays, but it has a nice balanced feel to it. I will be using it for other species as well, but I want to get it tested. Let's see, look, guys, let's see if we can get a bend in it first, shall we? Right, that's enough of the blurb about the reels, rods, nets, Oh, it's got a little hot ring holder there. Some rods don't have that. It's more of a sort of fly fishing thing, but you can put your lure or your hook in there, which I've done it up here in the rod ring. So I bring it down, I'll show you. I can put it just in there. Bet if I could see it, there. So. Ah, oh, let me just turn this camera around. And we actually have our first customer looking in the swim. You just see the swirl there, guys. Just down there, disturbance in the water, which tells me there's a carp moving around in there. All back here, I've got some crust that's gonna drift down on that ripple over there. So down here, I've got close in baiting, and I can tell just there. If you look, there's actually movement by that tree, just where it sticks up, where I dropped uh, my ground bait and maggots and stuff like that. So they're obviously under that tree root and they're coming out. And of course, I've got the bonus that anything can come up here and pick off pieces of crust. Dare I see if I can get you guys a better shot closer. Just gonna take a gamble and creep along. Obviously I'm wearing polarizing glasses so you're gonna see more. There's a the fish, there's the fish's tail.
actually see the fish's tail there, hopefully. There you go, guys. I can't, can't do any more than that, can I? Okay people, I'm here. I'll put the umbrella up because the wind's blowing down this way. I've got my three swims baited. I mean like down here, down there, down there. I've got my rod and reel rigged up. Now this is obviously a bizarre combination. It's an LRF rod, which I'm going to give a test to, and a centre pin reel, which I'm going to give a test to. Well I figured, let's try them both at the same time. Nice looking gear. I know I can catch with this uh, LRF um, out of sea. But I want to use it for a bit bigger fish and just see what sort of bend and power it's got with it. Same for the reel, maybe you'll get a take. Now, I'm going to put some ground bait down here. I'm pretty well rigged up now. All I'm using, by the way, is just here. It's a single size 12. I'll tell you what it is, because I think they're out of production now, but I use them for years and years. A Partridge of Redditch Z2, size 14, and they're called a Partridge Record Breaker Specialist Hook. My God. There was 25 in a packet back then. <laughs> I don't think you get that now, do you? Maybe wrong. So that's what hook I'm using. I like those because they're fairly wide gape. Right, let's put the rod in this massive rest down here. I've got some bit of bread there, but the, uh, the ducks have been taking care of me. So I get some bait in, literally, really, really close in. I'm going to show you how close. They're quite a hard ball of it, I'm just going to toss it down there because I want them digging around, I want them trying to break it up, because there's roach in there as well, we all know I can catch roach on there, it's not a problem there we go. I'm going to do a swim there, I'm going to move along here because I like this bush, I like this overhang and obviously I can still cast there let's put one in there, it's pretty windy, it's a very unsummer like day well it's not summer yet, it's late spring I suppose you call it let's just put some down there Bits of crust don't, don't matter. If I don't catch anything on the bottom, guys, I'm going to be using crust on the top. There's my setup, camera, I'm all rigged up. I'll show you that net in a minute because it's unbelievably strong and light. I reckon they'll be popular. As it chucks one or two balls just down here. You see how ridiculously close I am down there? Look, I'm just going to, I'm going to drop it, okay? Dropped it. Now, on top of that, I'm going to get a few of the good old pellets. Bosh, 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 some float, don't ask me why, I have no conception whatsoever. Now, I can barely see, I should think I'm in about 15 inches of water there, I doubt even that. Down here, as you can see, gentlemen fishing over there with a the pole way out, and here's the kick, I'm going to put a few maggots in there, because I figure like those munching on those maggots. Okay, now the theory is, well it's not a theory, we've done it for years as you probably might well know. Commercial carp water, regular day ticket, it's not some big private syndicate secret water with loads of big carp in. They've got, I think it's a 30 in each lake and I think there's three 30s in that other one because over there is mushroom land. You can see Bivy's already up there. I think one came out there about 34, something like that, quite recently, and that just makes the mushrooms grow. Once they get over 30, and it's photographed, seen on Facebook or wherever, the mushrooms start growing. <sighs> Luckily for me, not here. The theory is, when anglers go, they dump all their bait out. Some fishermen say no dumping a bait. Trust me, people throw their bait in, their sandwiches, whatever. The carp get to know this. Now, this is a quiet day. This is midweek. It's very, very quiet here. I'm figuring they come around the edge. I don't know which way they come, generally they would sort of circulate. So I've baited one, two, three, in a theory that they're not going in and out like this, that once they browse over the bait here, they'll move along the margins, they'll find my second one, they'll find my third one, but of course they could work up this way as well. I've got no way of knowing, I've done it once or twice before, generally it works, but I think I've just got now, sit back, wait, relax. In fact, what I do is put the big camera up and I'll just tell you and show you some specs on those uh, bits of tackle they sent me for testing. And of course, I send everything back. If I've got enough tackle, it's just it's, it's just the shock of new tackle. 
I'm not used to it, people, really. Well, guys, you know what? I don't even think, because I've had, I've had no movement to swim down here. I haven't seen anything moving that one. I have seen movement in there. I've definitely seen movement by the tree. So they obviously feel safer with a sanctuary of the tree. But I'm not, I don't even think I'm going to be bothered to fish with this regular avon rod. I don't think I'm going to bother with it. The idea is to catch something on this, this kitty here. And that's my setup, as you can see. And that we will see the beeper, the tip go. You've got three ways of here. You've got two, an audio and a visual together. Up at the tip, way down the tip here. Let's run it down. We've got a buzzer here. We've got our tip there. And we've got the clicker on the reel just there that hopefully will get revolving. But as greedy as all fishermen are, I feel my best chance comes from just having one rod and concentrating on it, lowering in an area where there are some fish. I think if I have two, I'm going to end up striking and missing stuff and disasters could befall me. All right, let's bait up. Oh, Jesus, what the hell was that? It went flying. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was a strike to end all strikes. It is indeed. A little perch, a bug-eyed perch. Who wonders where the hell he was going? He thought he was on the way to Mars. All right, let's get him unhooked. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to change from particle preoccupation of the maggots, put a bigger hook on and put a bigger piece of bread on. Because I think they've stirred it up so much that they can't actually see my maggot in there. There's one coming, there's one coming, just turned off the bread over there guys. Another one down there. So they're feeding on the bottom and they're feeding very, very tentatively on the surface. But boy, are they spooky. You guys have got good fish on this time. Slow sinking bread flake. I'm telling you, this rod has absolutely no trouble with these fish. I don't know how you call it an LRF rod when I've got a five pound carp on the end. And the reel obviously speaks for itself. Constant pressure with the centre pin. Little raucous with the ratchet sound, I feel. You could possibly file just the tip off of that a little bit so it's not quite so. Uh, rough sounding, you know, it's not rough at all, it's smooth, but the actual noise is very, very loud. Let's see if we get this one in on my new slippery rim landing net. It's just got some power, just a bit of I've done the ground pulling off the, off the net. Well, that was a nice common card. I think you'll agree on an LRF rod. Have you ever seen a bullhead, dragonet, miller's thumb, goby that size? Obviously, well pleased with that rod. That's your fault, you, the one at the back, sitting in the armchair with a can of beer in his hand. God, man, flyer. That was a real shocker of a bite. Oh, man alive. Always away, put the rod down, here it goes. We've got to wait for him to come back. You see the floats just there, I'm miles away from the rods, so it's sure to go under. I don't see any tails, I don't see any swirling at the moment. Nothing on the crust on the surface. 
They are very, very twitchy today. See if I can get that float out a bit further. Here we go, guys. And the sea fish watch the float. Don't take your eyes off the float. Keep watching the float. They are so right on it. There he is. Oh, he came off and that was a good fish. Oh, no. Why is it with you guys in there making all this bad luck for me? That was a good fish. Eight pounds. He's right there, guys. Oh, man. Not the duck. Got him. <laughs> I just beat the duck to it. Okay, action on the rod. Action on the rod. Now you can see how you can play this fish just with rim control there. Oh man, rod looks pretty nice curve on it. Bear in mind, it's an LIF rod and I'm haul arsing on a on a carp. Mind you, not in the net yet. This is why people like using these reels. It's because not just that they make a nice noise, but the constant pressure and just wind slowly and you maintain that bend in the rod all the time. Oh, it's a nice bend in that rod. That is a nice bend in that rod. I know they call it LRF, but I think you could take a pretty decent Pollock or Bass or something on this. And of course I could just drop off the ratchet like that so I can go to stealth mode, which is possibly much more enjoyable. Here he comes. Rod has absolutely no trouble whatsoever. Providing I'm keeping it low, I don't ever come right back, don't come back at a cute angle. Keep your rod fairly low and you'll get most of the uh, power out the bottom end of the rod. Really straight out. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> there we go. Hook's falling out. The hook's falling out because it's got this hook free mesh. There we go. Calm down, Neddy. Well, well, well. There's a centre pin reel. There's a leaping common carp that's very surprised at being caught on a centre pin. I'm going to put that ratchet on so I don't get a backwind. Nice, pretty clean fish. Not big, what? Might push five. I suppose he probably would put five if I. If I put him on the scale. So, just goes to show you, rob works, net works, reel works. Good system. Always has been. I like that slippery. That, that fish absolutely flew across this rim. I can see why matchmen are raving about this rim. I can see that. So match, you want to get that fish straight in. And of course here, so a nice fish protection area as well. Let's get this kitty back in the water. I'll put him well down here. There he goes, and away. It makes me wonder if I had the next size rod up, how much power you get out of it, even though it's a rockfish rod for LRF. Look, no problem at all. And my slippery net. Straight in, straight in. Let's get this guy back. And that's what I was saying earlier on, if you took the line guard off of this, you could touch ledger properly. At the moment you can't really touch ledger properly because the line guard takes some of the uh, sensitivity off your finger. Wow, that is windy. Not a big fish, not a big fish. Hopefully it's going to find the bottom of my nice shiny net. Ooh, in. And there we go. Bit of an unusual angle, not a big fish. I don't know, might go three pounds. Oh, well people, I'm right behind the umbrella because it's ripping now. What is it with this British summer? Okay, so what I've done, I've got the bigger hook, which has made a difference, and just 15, 18 inches, I've got a snapped off canal float. It's called a Billy Makin's Grey, probably didn't make them now. 
you can see the tip was probably about that big. It's been snapped off, but what I've done is I've felt penned here and I've got some tipex for the white base here. And that obviously won't take two BB, it takes one BB at about, I don't know, number eight, something like that. And that is just enough on the top there. As it settles, I can see the movement of the carp down there and I just see, the, it's got to move it, don't forget, half an inch. What's happening is I'm holding this line, if you can see the, the boom, the bar, if you like, there of the cage. If I do this, the width of my finger is not long enough and it isn't to get around here. And if I take it around here to touch ledger, which is how you touch ledger, I've got this frame, the line is touching that frame. And I'm sorry, but that's just not sensitive enough for me. So I would, if I was using this for touch ledger, and just unscrew it and take that frame off. Nice reel. Nice fish. Nice rod. Nice evening, but it's blowing and it's chilly. Have I got the method? Fingers crossed. More bread, please. Well, hopefully you saw that take, guys. Actually, see the, the float go. Man, got that fish in absolutely no time. Guys, I think it's proved the point. Nothing wrong with the robin weed at all. This might be fish of the day. Common carp. I hopefully got the hook up as well. In yeah, a common carp, it's one of those naughty ones that won't keep still. Doesn't want to go on YouTube. You know what it's like. It's probably one of those keyboard fish. It's just trouble all the way. It's just so trouble all the way. It really is. It really is a naughty, naughty, naughty boy. There he is, guys. Well pleased, good little session in the end, but do you know what it was? Just something subtle. Look, we're not saying it's a rod, we're not saying it's a reel. It was the float to indicate the bite, but this guy has no trouble catching the fish. I've got to be honest, it should be, not LRF, it should be LCF, light carp fishing. That's what I think it should be. It's got plenty of beef in it. Pretty little fish. This one looks like a mirror carp. There's my net, my slidey, slippery rim net. Man, they do slide over. No wonder the matchmen like them. Pretty, they didn't make this in a big uh, giant one for carp. Wow, I wonder is that the method, that little... They're so finicky today, the uh, bailiff guy came round and he told me, he said the guys over there in the Mushroom City have had one carp. Oh dear. So I did think something was amiss. You know, before I thought there's something, something's wrong here somewhere, you know, why the fish are so twitchy. But if you go down to the float, I tried the quiver tip, tried the uh, bite indicator, and there we go, a nice carp. They wanted a test done on the rod. Go and catch some fish with a little bit of tackle, we'll send you. Wow, this is. I'm guessing if he ever stays still. Stay still. Good boy. Listen, if you're naughty, I'll throw you in the water. 
That did it. Nice carp, guys, I guess. He lays still. I guess he's going to go eight and a half ish. Might go towards nine. Great fish. Good scrap. Centipin did the job, which I knew it would do anyway from years ago. But I have been impressed with the uh, power in that rod. I wonder what the next one up does on a pike or even a tope. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Watch the Totally Awesome Outdoor Show, Mike's one. Get yourself one of these rubber blow up carp that lay still. And don't forget to get your download copy, free download copy of the Awesome Angler magazine. We'll see you next time. I'm going to get this chappy back in the water. Guys, just down there is a carp. I'm going to try and lower the float on three carp, three carp. Watch the float. Watch the float there. Watch the float. Man, they are all over it. Could get a line bite, could get a fish. It'd be nice to get one to the camera. It's just drifting in amongst them. I might be a little bit off the bottom there. The float is just off the tip of the rod. It's going to be one flick sharp if that float even dithers. Well, it's dithering now, Graham, do something. No, we've got to wait for it to uh, go under. Don't dislike the short rod here because it's absolutely nothing to hold it, it's so light. It's ridiculous. Let's put that round for you guys. Could have a good fish on here. Just, I'm going by the boil. When the float went on, I struck, there's a big boil. Don't think it's the foul fish. Sometimes they, you can get a foul hook one. They are going gangbusters in the swim now. I feel this is a decent one. What a session. Yeah, nice mirror. into the slippery net though. Let's put the mat around here for you guys. Change the scenery. So I've had a really nice common and now oh, this is centipede. Oh man alive. You can certainly put some pressure on the fish with it, no question. I guess that's why we used to use it for barbel years ago. And fat mirac. Oh, they're all going mad today aren't they? I think it's the weather myself. No, I'll tell you what I think it is. It's the fact this rod gets them in really fast. There we go. Crackerjack fish, that one. Nice mirror, nice common. It's number 13, and I've had a bream about. Two and a half pounds I didn't film. Whew, what a session. Just, I feel because of that float. A little subtle change made the difference. Just so you know, I wasn't telling you porky pies. This is bream number three. So that's 13 carp and three bream. What a bream is doing, taking a big piece of bread and a hook that size, I have no conception. But great fishing or what here at Vale Farm? Goodness me. I guess you've got to come back and do some more of this margin fishing. There's a tail right there. Right there. Is the bread going to sink in time? Must be very, very close to him. Watch that float, guys. Watch that float. Can't take my eyes off the float. I'm on. I'm on. Oh, oh I don't know if you saw that tape. <laughs> that flashed. Flashed under that float. Oh, I do like this little rod. He just nails these fish so quickly. Look, look, look. Look, look, you're in a match, my goodness me. Why would you ever... He wants to come up there, he doesn't even want to go in the net. He's in, too late. He is in. Well, 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 how fast was that? Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Uh, hook's falling out. Saved me a lot of grief and aggravation. Fish is still kicking, he doesn't know what it is. He doesn't know what went on there. That all happened way too fast for him. <laughs> He's still fighting. Man. 
There you go. On the LRF. The old net, unfortunately, was sent to me brand new. I think when they get it back, it's going to be covered in slime and black. It was all pretty and white. Now, away he goes. Wow, that float has made such a difference. Obviously, I think this rod and reel combo could take a pretty big fish. He's going to try and get a shot, sort of looking over my shoulder. He's going to put it right down there. He's going to wet it first and then just drop it. That last one, my God, the rod nearly came out of my hand. Not even fishing a rod length out. Good oh, guys. Oh my God. Oh, I got this swing going with that float. <laughs> had a big time bite now then. Oh, he's come off. I've told you at the back, don't make me come round your house. I know where you live. Every time. Every time I look up to talk to that camera, that guy in the back there reaches over for another can of beer. And then my hook comes out. I haven't even got a can of beer. Now, bread sinking. <coughs> oh, fish right in front of my float. They're digging on the bottom. I call it point blank carping. Put the float on, camera on. Everything's looking good. Come on, fish. Moving, moving. Must be small fish down there as well. Oh, no. Oh, nice fish. Nice fish, guys. Nice fish. I'm going to screw it around with this one. Stripping me out, stripping me out. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This could be fish of the day, people. This could be fish of the day. That's going to make up for duck of the day. I don't, understand, I don't understand, guys, how this rod just seems to play. It just wheels them in. A tiny, what was it? 12 gram, 13 gram rod? How does it do that? I don't even know if this one's going in this net. I think mad fish have got to make a big net, definitely. I think guys would like that slippery edge to the net. You can get the fish straight over. Yeah, this is a good fish. LR ref rod. Oh. Don't make me laugh. Don't make me fall in the water, please. Come on. They wanted it tested. They get to get it tested. That's a camera getting tested as well, there, guys. Move that round a bit for you. It's alright for these people with camera crews trying to do it all on your own. It's great fun. Come on, come on. Yeah, this is a chunky. This is not a Tom Pot Blenny. This is not a, a Smithsonian Dragonette or something. Oh, God, I'll make my wrist ache. And a broken float, my God. Oh, this is a good, good, good eight pounds. Oh, no, no, don't go too close, don't go too close. Guys. How embarrassing, guys, if this, got, if this rod explodes with a big snap. How embarrassing is me saying I can land big fish with it. Please don't break. Oh, I got a lot of pressure on him. Shorten him up. Shorten him up. Shorten him up. No, he's not having it. It's, 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 it's def that extra pound or two bigger than what I've been catching. It's... Sorry, I'm sorry, Mr. Madfish, but...